Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer and the Organic Research Center. We are working together since a long time for inviting me in this conference. And uh, uh, my presentation also, I think, will be very different from, from the other one. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an expert on IPR in general. I'm uh, an agronomist. And uh, my presentation will uh, uh, try to define what are seed systems, why the informal seed systems are important, we have to promote and find a way, public ways to promote them, why do we need IPRs if we need it in this case, and how do we innovate in breeding. I think it's important to remind to all of us how breeders are working and how they produce new varieties. And so, some consideration about the way forward. And um, as I said, I'm an agronomist. I'm working on the Italian uh, Association for Organic Agriculture and also on the Italian, with the Italian Seed Network. This is a network of 30 associations. And with regard to the title of our, present, of our conference, I think that plants are not property. So I would like to, to, to express at the beginning my my way of thinking and in which part of the field I am. And so our networks, our seed network, network was based in 2007 and we have at the moment 35 associations working in this network uh, as a members. One of them is the Italian Association for Organic Agriculture. And my, uh, my presentation, my outcomes are based mainly on a European project um, called Soliban, Strategies for Organic and Low Input Integrated Breeding and Management, uh, that just finished la last year. And we produced due, uh, two uh, final documents, policy recommendation to sustain diversity strategies within food systems, and one specific recommendation dealing with seed issues. So, uh, with regard to different seed system and the, portal, and the importance of informal ones, we have to consider that seeds are very important for our farming system. They are the way that we use in the past, that we are still using, to modernize agriculture. Of course, we uh, organized all the rules or the, like, or the legal aspect with regard to seeds, with regard to access to seed or marketing of seeds, so the catalog, the UPO system and so on, in a way to modernize agriculture in a, just one way. So the idea that we had until now, I think, is that there will be only one possibility for agriculture to be modernized, and the one that we have in mind would be done with laws that can help agricultural system to be modernized during the time, but just in one way. And the, the approach that I would like to, to suggest to you is that we have to look at seeds, in this case, at, uh, at the production, the use, the breeding of new varieties and so on, uh, with the approach of seed system. So we have the informal seed system that you can see here uh, uh, in, in the core of this graph, where diffusion of seed, seed selection and production are mainly done or managed by farmers themselves. And then we have what we call the formal one in red, where breeding research, breeding activities, multiplication and marketing are done in a linear way by public companies, private companies and so on. And as you can see, we can have a point of a connection between the two systems, and we had point of connection between the two systems, we had exchange of germoplasm, but now, in the last year, in the last, I would say, 50, 15, uh, 10 years, all the rules that we are putting in place are trying to cancel the flow of germoplasm and try to cancel at all uh, informal seed system. So, formal seed system are mainly based on uniform varieties, and in the other way, informal seed systems are mainly based on land races, population of varieties that have a good diversity inside. And if we, we look at seed laws, IPR policies, they fit very well with the idea of uniformity, but not with the idea of diversity. So it's clear that all, all the legal issue and stuff that we have put in place in the last year with regard to seeds, they are based on uniformity. They work very well with uniformity because you can say that's mine, that's not mine, and then you can put property rights in something. But with diversity, things necessarily they have to change. 
And what we did in the past, and we are trying to change at the moment, uh, is based on the idea of this gentleman, Douglas, that in, uh, 90, in the, um, 1980 wrote a paper about seed programs. So the idea was to have a kind of linear idea of development and progress on seed system from, I would say, the traditional ones to the modern ones. So we have to put all the country from Ethiopia, that's a picture from Ethiopia some years ago, Five six, five, six years ago, to United States. That's the only possibility that we have with regard to seeds. So the, the modernity in the fields means United States, not Ethiopia. But what we found, and of course, we have to change all the seed system from a public one to a private one, because that's the only solution that we have for agriculture. But what we found, in, uh, for example, in our project, in Solimon project, is that even in Europe, even in countries that are well industrialized, that are modern, so we are not Africa or Asia, even in these countries, informal systems are still alive. A, they can play a huge role. Why? So informal systems are important to guarantee access to propagation material. Uh, for, for many farmers that cannot have uh, access to modern varieties. And in many countries, you can see that's the figure from a report of FAO in, uh, of five years ago. You, if you look at Africa, for example, you have countries where informal seed uh, systems still uh, have uh, a huge role uh, in, the, in the country, up to 90% of seed movement. So they are still in place even if FO tried to cancel by the last 50 years of policy, agricultural policy. So it's clear that the share between the informal and the, and the formal one change according to the crop, to the country. For example, in the, in the case of corn, we have more private companies and more formal seed system even in Africa. But with regard to wheat, we have a lot of informal seed system still in Europe. And why they are important? They are important because, in many cases, farmers can prefer varieties that have a specific adaptation to local condition, testing quality, cooking quality, and so on. Formal systems are too expensive, for example, or you can have a good quality of seeds without uh, a lot of work, so it could be easy to have a good quality of seeds, or it's quite impossible to have access to improved seeds. So in all these cases, informal seed systems are a good solution for farmers. And at the end, even the Food and Agriculture Organization said that it's impossible to replace farmer seed systems completely, and it would be unwise to try, even if they tried. So now they recognize that they make a mistake, and they are trying to change their law and their policies according. Because farmer seed systems provide an important, an important component of food security and a vital haven for diversity. So in this system, we are, or farmers, they are creating new diversity during the time. They are not just, just conserving something from the past, but they are innovative. They are creating innovation, a new variety. But with regard to Europe, so it's easy to say that in Africa they are important. It's easy to say that in Ethiopia most of the farmers are using informal seed system, but in Europe, we can imagine to have marginal farmers in Europe? Yes, we can. If you are not using water, fertilizers, or pesticides, if you are using organic agriculture, if you are on the mountains, on the hills, for example, in Italy, a lot of farmers are not on the plain, but are cultivating on the mountains and the hills. If you are very interested on the quality of your produce, because you are selling something f uh, in, in the local market, and if you have cultural values, that, that's, I, I mean, now with the idea that, that we have a modernity, it's very impossible to imagine that someone can have a cultural value attached to a variety. But in the past, we used to have. And some people, they still have this kind of cultural values. What does it mean? That they are cultivating a variety because they belong to this variety.
So they are not doing for productivity reason. They are doing for cultural reason. And in all these cases, modern varieties are not the right solution for you. So even from the uh, scientific point of view, you have to use local varieties, all varieties, population, whatever you call, because they are be the best solution for your system. And until now, we created a system where farmers in general, they are clients and providers of seeds at the same time. So they give land races raw material to public research, and then they buy seeds from private companies and so on. Usually, they give materials for free, and then they have to pay to have seed back. But that system could work if you can have good seeds for your agricultural system. But if you are marginal farmers, you are just a provider. So you, you are just giving for free varieties without anything in change, because you cannot find on the market varieties that are suitable to your system. So it's a system that is unfair for marginal farmers. And <coughs> We are not just talking about this system. We have to have in mind that we are talking, talking about research, innovation in agricultural research system. Until now, we thought that we have science, then local knowledge. We have some, someone, some breeders in CIMIT, for example, in Mexico, they can produce new varieties. Then they send varieties to Africa. They have to adapt to their condition through the national agricultural research system and so on. And then you have this question, why farmers or marginal farmers are not adopting this technology? And then there's a job for social scientists. They have to find a way why farmers are not adopting. They are stupid. They don't want to innovate. They prefer to be in the past. They are traditional. So we try to imagine why they are not using. They are not using because that these varieties are not useful for them. They prefer to stick to their varieties. So the system that we have in place at the moment is a system where science is a cathedral. Here, here you can see the diffusion of hybrid mice in France. So they collect raw materials from France, local varieties of mice, they produce at Inra Center the hybrid mice and then they disseminate. The system is a classical cathedral from top to down. But what we are working, because we are in a network of networks in Europe, is something different. We are working with the idea of bazaar, not cathedral. We are working in this case, this graph is from the seed network in France, where they uh, try to uh, show the number type of connection between farmers within the network. And all these connections are connection of knowledge and materials. And they are producing innovation through this system or networks. It's a completely new way of producing innovation that we have in place. With regard to breeding, former plant breeding is working with the idea of selection environments and then target environments. So you do selection in research station, and then you can imagine that this research can apply to all the farmers in all agricultural system. But with regard to the idea of changing uh, the agricultural research system and involving farmers in the research and doing research for marginal farmers, then you have to work in selection, selection and target environment should be the same. So you have to work on farm with farmers in order to produce innovation that can be useful for marginal farmers. And so what we found that the, the, the relation between formal and informal seed system with regard to research question could be very difficult and it's a slow, low um, cultural process. So it takes time because you have to I would say, regain trust between the actors. In many cases, scientists are saying farmers cannot develop such skills. They are not able to do crossing. They cannot do it. Or they can say, how we can imagine, manage research in on-farm uh, um, on farm research without controls, without replicated trials? How we can do it without our statistical methods? And at the end, they can say, we will lose our jobs if farmers are doing all the jobs in the farm. And in the other way around, farmers are saying that the researchers are not really interested in, in them, and the researchers only take our varieties to hand them to industry. So it's very difficult to bring together these two actors in order to, uh, I would say, 
um, have more trust uh, between the formal and the informal seed systems. Mm -hmm. But it's important because we have our challenge is to bring back diversity in farming systems. So that's the problem that we have. And we have in some way to um, challenge also the, the plant breeding paradox. Uh, in this case, the, the quotation is from Paul Gaps that uh, in um, 2006, they, he said that plant breeding has been undermining the very genetic basis on which it rests. So we are doing breeding, we are breeding for, uni for uniformity, we are destroying our diversity in the fields. So we are to find a new way to do breeding in order to create diversity used by farmers in the fields. And if you look at agrobiodiversity trend, we have to make a choice because in the past, with domestication, we uh, had a drop of diversity, of course. Then we had an increase of diversity because the dispersal of uh, varieties all um, around the world and the process of uh, innovation done by farmers, the creation of land races. And now, in uh, modern modernization time, we still we have another drop of diversity, and we have to to see our future, we are at the end of the graph, there will be an increase of diversity in the future or still a decrease. And we have to make a choice. For us it's important to put together diversity in the farms through plant breeding, informal seed system and so on. So we are in this time we have to solve this answer. To answer yes, to answer to this question, sorry. And let's come to IPRs. Why do we need IPRs? I think that it's important to, to come back to the idea of IPRs. We, as a society, decided some years ago that we need IPRs, why? Not to give monopoly to one person, but to benefit society. That's the picture of IPRs. So, we have to have in mind that IPRs are not a right. In the, as a human rights, but it's something that society decided to give to someone in order to have better innovation in a society of, uh, as a world. And in the last years, uh, 100 years, for, we um, define different kinds of IPRs in agricultural systems, patent, plant bid rights, geographical indication, copyright, trademark, that works very well, for example, in the case of Kamut. And all the rights that we produce, let's say, are based on formal innovation, are based on individual rights, and based on property and monopoly. And that's why they really don't work very well with diversity and informal seed systems. And it's strange if you look at history, when they first started talking about intellectual property rights, the problem was they were not right, they were privileged at the beginning. But someone decided to call it right, because if you call it right, then it will be more difficult to challenge it. If it's a privilege, during the time you can change it. So at the beginning, the people that was uh, in favor of call it, call it them right, were people that was in favor of protectionism. And the people that was in favor of name it privilege was in favor of free market because they call it we have a free market you are the first inventor so the more important things for, for you is to be the first and then you have to gain your market and that's enough you don't have to have a right monopoly because monopoly is against free market but now things are changing and if you look at the debate that we have at, inter at the international level at this moment it's quite strange to me because people that is in favor of free market they are in favor of intellectual property rights very strict very narrow a people has me that we are in favor of a kind of protection in for agriculture at regional level for example we are against this kind of rights. So things change during the time. And with regard to the UPO system, yes, I, just for three minutes, yeah, the UPO system, we have to uh, um, be aware that it's very different from the patent system, that we have three things that are important, farmer's privilege, breeder's exemption, and this idea of essentially derived varieties. So it's a system that can be more suitable to agriculture. Why? 
I will explain in, in one minute. But first, let me finish my presentation about IPR system with this graph from Science. It's not a communist journal. Some years ago, Science said in this graph that what we are, um, the way that we are um, going with regard to IPRs in the United States, that we are spending more and more money on lawyers. So the all, um, we are not spending more on research. We are spending more on lawyers because they have to negotiate and litigate patents. So it could be useful, but for lawyers, not for the society as a large. And how do we innovate in breeding? We have to remind that innovation in breeding has been done by a process of exchanging and sharing of knowledge and seeds. In this graph, uh, in this graph yes, you can see the history of Northern 10, the, variety of, the best variety of the Green Revolution done by Norman Borlaug. And the genes from Northern 10, they are coming from China, Japan, United States. They're coming from people, from people that move during the time in different countries. More complicated, the history of rice. In this case, the history of IR36, new varieties done by the IRI in the Philippines. And here you can see local varieties from China, India, Taiwan, Philippines, United States, Indonesia. They are being used to have the new one, but this process at this moment could be impossible. Why? Uh, why? Because with the system of patents of UPOF that we have in place, you cannot do it. Because we have to negotiate with all these people in order to have access to these varieties. So we have to reflect on that. So Green Revolution, that was the big uh, effort to change agriculture, were based on free exchange of germoplasm, not using IPRs or variety protection and public money. That's why they have a good impact on agriculture. Here is the history of wheat in Italy. You can say crossing uh, of different varieties from the local one in green to the modern one. So who is the owner of all this system? Where we can put a flag to say you are the owner of this? Just at the end, in the middle, or at the start, at the local variety? That's the history of bread wheat in Italy. And the question is always the same. Who is the owner of all this stuff? So innovation is breeding. in breeding is incremental, is based on sharing of resources, is based on a long process of coevolution of plants and farmers in different agricultural conditions, and raw material is not a product of nature itself, but of farmers or breeders. And we have to bear in mind all this concept in order to do some policies that can enhance innovation in breeding. And the way forward, I just finished. We have to come back to this idea to uh, separate uh, farmers from seeds. So during the last 100 years, we tried to separate farmers. So farmers, they have just the produce, the product, but they have no right on the mean of production because seed laws, hybrids, IPRs, they separate in order to create a market, a capitalist market for seeds. And the idea was that one size fits all. So you can have all the system that fits very well for uniformity and for industrialization of agriculture. But a new approach is needed. So we have to look at seed system as a way where farmers can cultivate varieties but also can do on farm research, where they can market varieties but also exchange varieties, and all this system can contribute to the, st the sustainable use of uh, plant genetic resources. So the key words of a new seed system could be decentralized seed system, farmer oriented, with a new role for farmer in breeding and innovation. So we imagine to have different kind of varieties with different kind of uh, systems, legal system, and also IPR system, for example. So how we can promote and protect varieties in different system. But the ideas that we can have for discussion, we have to shift from property to protection and recognition. We have to shift from individual rights to collective rights. We have to shift from idea of kind of catalog to a sort of register of farmers variety and from idea of uniformity to the idea of identifiability. And uh, so we are talking about integrated system, finish one, where you can have uh, 
the flow of germoplasm between formal and informal systems are kind of semi-commons, as said by the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources. And this integration could be based on recognition, reciprocity, and protection from misappropriation. And so maybe we need public money to do it. And uh, just at the end, uh, I would like to um, to use the wording of Galeano, the, he just passed away yesterday, it's a writer from Uruguay, and um, he wrote a lot about farmers in Latin America, and uh, in this case he is saying that farmers from Mexico, they are made by corn, they produce corn, they are made by corn. So we are talking about tradition and modernity, what kind of modernity we would like for Europe? And for us, maybe it's uh, very difficult to understand Galeano because we are not more made by corn. But if you look at this painter done in, in the 60th century from an Italian painter that is Arcimboldo, in this case it's a, a kind of still life, but it was done to, 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 to see in the, also in upside down. So th there were a kind of a mirror, so you can see at the same time still life and the farmer. So we were made by onions, carrot, and so on. But we just forgot. And we have to remind us again. Thank you. Thank you.